Every Fast Six, every pig. This is AFL Fantasy Live with the Traders. Now, here are your hosts, Roy, Calvin and Warney. G'day with the Traders, brought to you by KO. I'm Roy, I coach Destroy, and I'm here with Warning. Coach of the Warned Dogs. And Calvin. Coach of Mighty Calvinator, boy. Challenge the Mighty part there, Calvin. (laughs) Boys, it's round 18. Finals are near, and unfortunately, similar to last week when Josh Kelly was named out, we've got some giant news on the out front dog. It is huge. It is Stephen Cornelio, who hurt his knee last weekend. He was playing against the Tigers, ended up with a zero out of that for his owners. About a quarter of the competition have him, so that's a must trade, I would say, for this week. I'm in that boat. Well, you okay? I've been worried about you all week. First injury. <laughs> Cow, yes, I'm all right. Because you I don't whinge and complain about injuries. <laughs> like you I I I'll challenge that as well. <laughs> as we can see now, Calvinator, you do have some issues this week. You are missing Nat Five. Oh, see. Who is out now with <laughs> this is an infected elbow. It's what? not even That's a real injury. Of all things, ankle, knee, I'll accept, but not a scratched elbow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Isn't he washing the sleeve he between must games now? not right. It's yeah, so he will be missing, and I'll tell you what, Calvin, that is a must trade for you and about 20,000 other coaches who will need to do something about that. Otherwise, Cow, you might be eating another donut this week. <laughs> Have you got some good news on well, the ends front, Cow? I've got some great news because there's a boy called Will Snelling who's averaging 100 points in the VFL and eight tackles a game. He'll debut for the Bombers along well. Uh, Dersma is back as well, so that comes so as a donut. A donut you. <laughs> the one I want to talk about, though, is Taylor Adams. Now, Taylor Adams is in... Mm. But it's the effect that he'll have on Adam Trelaw. Now, over the last two years, when they've played together, Adam Trelaw has scored 21 points less. Now, Good I haven't stat. seen Massive stat. an Not effect great. like this. You remember when you and I used to go out uni night stuff? Yes. And we'd be there and we'd have a few girls around us and Roy would rock great up. Great fun. And we'd lose all the girls. <laughs> exactly. I've never seen an effect like that. <laughs> That's more of night. an Ablett Brothers scenario, mate. <laughs> 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 Okay, so what off. am I doing with him, though? Is that the thing? Am I trading him? No. If you've got Trelaw, yeah. you're obviously going to hold. You're not yeah. going to jump at no. shadows. But you you're don't not, make him a trade target, You're do not you? bringing him in based mm. on that. Very yeah. interesting. Now, I've been floating through Twitter, and there's some um, key issues this week. The first one, people want to know, is Dunkley a must-have? Now, believe it or not, there's 70% of the competition that don't have him mm. at the moment. Wow. So they missed out on that 189 last weekend. Obviously, he's back in the midfield. He hasn't scored under 118 in seven weeks. Boys, answer the question. Is he a must-have? 100%. Yeah. In your forward line, I think he would be your number number one Ford target down there, would he? He certainly is, yeah. He's, he's number one in the rolling 22. Doing absolutely everything too. He's tackling his way there. He's kicking goals. Everything that you need. And the, guess the best thing about him, he hasn't gone under 118 in the last no, seven no, weeks. No, he's hit some absolute It's absolutely huge. Um, another one, people are wondering whether they should pay up for Lockie Whitfield. Okay. Now, he's got a break even of 129. He's only gone under 100 twice this year, yep. and that's when he was injured. So do you pay the big bucks or do you chase value? He's an number one defender, and he will get that 125 break even this week. Yep. Against Collingwood, last two scores, 122, 123. Just off the top of my head there, Destroy. <laughs> yep. um, yeah, he's a jet. You need him in your team. All right, I think the most... Um, Common trade target this week, or I think should be the number one trade target for people, is the value of Patrick Cripps. Yep. He's coming up against the Suns this week. He scored 162 and 163 against them in his last two. Yeah. Dog, I'll throw to you for this one because in your situation, I think this is really relevant. I think he's my must trade this week. Yep. I've got the Cornelio issue. Oh, so that. that's the simple one. I make a few dollars out you of do? it. And I think that he is probably one of the players that you could see over these next few weeks. Get back to his best. He's averaged 110 in the past, so I think that you're getting one for a bargain price at the moment, yep. but to his matchups from here on yep. and getting that instant reward, as you said there, against the Suns this week. Yep. And probably the thing that I liked the most out of team selection that we saw was that Brad Shear had been omitted yep. and he'd shut down some of the big guns in the last yep. few weeks. So I think that that's a reason why it's a big tick to bring Patrick yep. Cripps into my side. Across the board, the Blues boys have just, their scoring has gone through the roof under have, Teague yeah. and he hasn't been fit to be able to enjoy that, so I think he's going to have a massive end to the year. Okay, it's time for the KO split decision.
Now, you would know better than most, Dog, that Billings has arguably been the <laughs> form player of the competition yeah. since the bye, which is coincidentally since when you got him out of your side. <laughs> Probably haven't made any bigger clangers than this in my life. He scored a 170 after I traded him out. He's averaging 123 in wow. his last five. So he's got a ceiling. He's an absolute machine, and I think he should be up there next to Dunkley as a forward trade target. Well, if I was tossing up between him and a guy called Ron Marshall, boys, Marshall gets the tick. Great matchup this week against English. Last five scores for him, he goes at an average of 113. It's huge. How about that? That is a better option than Billings right. this week. Looks like I'm KO splitting the decision here. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, the forward trade targets. Now I'm taking the DPP here yes. of Rowan Marshall. It means you can have Max Grundy wow. and Marshall, who those guys just, uh, it's bully boy tactics versus the little rucks, Isn't and they it? all end up with huge scores. So I like having all of those three, and I like taking advantage of the Tim English matchup this week. So Rowan Marshall gets the split decision. Now let's hear a few words from big boy McAvoy. <laughs> My team, probably Tom Mitchell, even with a broken leg, I reckon he still rack up 40 and a fair few points um, across the league. Uh, like and Lockie Neal, um, quality play and, and racks him up. Oh, I think James Sicily would be pretty quick to the phone to, uh, to check his scores, um, along with how his golf handicap's going. Um, but yeah, he'll be, he'll be first there, I reckon. Oh, you got to look at any of those backs down there taking the kick-ins as soon as they're playing on from that uh, from that square. So maybe Sissers under the pump again. <laughs> right, if Sick Dog was quick to his phone right on the weekend, I hope he was just as quick to throw it into the wall because that's what all his Not fantasy good. coaches were doing. We thought he was back the week before. He was. 121 versus Collingwood. There were 14 marks. Um, he was settled back in defence, which was a big thing after he'd been playing forward. But I think um, we underestimated the return of Grant Birchall and the effect that Birch just slipping into those switch plays would have on the marks that Sicily was going to take. And that's the thing, Birchall took eight marks. Yeah. That was down here in Launceston yep. at uh, Pig Park at York Park. Yep. And he was able to do that. And I reckon he took a fair bit away from Sicily. Mm. So with Sicily, obviously, um, you wouldn't be looking to trade him in this week. If you've got him, yep. as far as trading him out, it would be a luxury trade. That's it. If he's the worst player... Yeah. in your completed team, then he can go. But, geez, that's very luxury that's, for a lot of people. And that players. is the big issue there, Cal. Like, if you think he's going to score about a 70 this week, which is probably yeah. where he could be if this virtual effect is a real yeah. thing. and he hasn't got a great run of games. No. Then there are plenty of defenders or premium defenders that you could be getting. And yeah. so maybe it's finding that coin to get up to your Whitfield. Yeah, 100%. definitely. Now, Warnie, is there any questions coming through on Twitter? Well, people have been all over the Twitter sphere and asking questions. As we reach these finals, I think people are scrambling. And Adro Lester wants to know, Dylan Clark to either Patrick Cripps or Tom Rockcliffe. Who Ooh, would right. you be picking in <laughs> oh, this no, one? Oh, right. You be quiet. I'll answer this one. <laughs> the answer's Cripper. Now, Roy's going to say the pig Tom Rockcliffe because yep. he's got this man love thing love. going on. It's with a pig. Him. It's real. Oh, I understand. Pig love. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit dodgy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, it's Cripper. Based on yeah. value, based on the game this week, he could go 160. That's your pick. Okay, now believe it or not, I will just jump in. Yes, I always um, say to get the pig. However, in this matchup, when you take up, um, take into account value, yep. plus that back-to-back one sixties, I'm going Cripper. Cripper is the right answer this You're week. You're loving a bit of instant reward about trades, aren't you? I am, I am, and I think it's going to be long term, though, dog. Okay, next one <laughs> comes here from Felix. Who do I trade out of my back line first? Has James Sicily there as an option? Right. Also, Brody Smith or Harry Perryman from the Giants. I'll tell you this one because I don't even know who Perryman is. <laughs> so I'll <laughs> tell you right now, answer? he will go. He needs to go yeah. because I at least know the other two. Brody Smith's got a great run of games coming right. up. Yeah. And Sick Dog is Sick Dog, but he could be anything on his yeah. day. So, yeah. Who, Perryman? Yeah, I agree. Right. There's a lot of people in this situation, dog, and it's like splitting yeah. hairs almost at the moment. But if it's a rookie on the ground that you're splitting hairs with or someone that, you know, you wouldn't recognise in the street, so to speak, they're the ones that you trade out. At least you know what Sicily can do, um, what Smith can do. So you get rid of the Perrymans or the rookies in these matchups, I believe. All right, well, then this one probably is answered there by Jay, for Jay Barker. Whitfield to Clark. 
or do you get cover for the bench in the forward line? So that's what you're saying, Roy. Yeah. It's a big upgrade there going from Clark it up to Whitfield. Is. And it's a whole new beast. We've found out the hard way, well, especially you, um, <laughs> we've laid out lately. If yep. you don't uh, have cover, you're going to be wearing a donut. So we are big advocates for making sure you have cover on the bench, not only for cash generation, but to cover those donuts and those laid outs. Having said that, Bugger the bench, Roy. <laughs> it's all about points on field, and that's what yeah. you might need to do. Yes. If you're in Calvin's position, oh, not many are, and a lot of people are scrambling to make yep. the eight, that's what you've got to do. Yeah, if it's a significant upgrade to an Uber premium like this, you run the gauntlet of a laid out and you take the upgrade. You sure do. All right, Calvin, let's have a look at your captains for this week. Rightio, Calvin. Time to shine, big fella, because <laughs> it's a huge week when it comes to captains with a lot of options here with pros and with cons. So let's start off with... Brody Grundy against GWS. He should be magnificent, as would Rowan Marshall. We've already talked about him. Up against English. Now, the one I love the most, though, is Andrew Gaff. Now, Gaff is against Melbourne. Let's think about what the Bulldogs did to Melbourne last week. So, we had Dunkley, who went 189. We had Hunter with a 154. And we had McRae with a 110. Yeah. Andrew Gaff will be amongst the points this week. Yeah. Try telling me not, Roy. Well, I will try telling you not because I'm a gaff owner and I've been watching him in recent weeks and his scoring has been very disappointing. In the fourth quarter, he drops off and it's become extremely evident that he relies on marks. Okay. He doesn't tackle just to, you know, keep the points ticking over. So... I, I like the Hunter and McRae likenesses here yes. because they obviously rely on marks as well. So are you convinced yeah. that West Coast will take <laughs> enough marks here and Gaff, obviously, most importantly, to get a respectable captain score? It's not at home. That's a concern. It is. <laughs> if I had a flag, I would wave it because it is like, well, Gaff has not gone over 120 in his last five I games. I feel this away. is a stitch No, 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 it's not a stitch up. Trust me. It's okay. Gaff will be 150 this week. Wow. Yep, lock it in. All well, right. I'm actually looking at my captain from that game, right. but I'm going with Max Gorn. And I think the big thing about old Max Gorn is that he's going to be up against, well, no Nick Nat. That's got to help him massively. So yes, true. that's yep. the reason he's coming into my side. So he's going to get a skipper as he returns to the Warn Dogs, with Patrick Cripps also coming in as well. So those two fellas will basically make my team. 100 points better this week, I'm thinking. Yeah, nice work. I don't mind those trades at all, dog. Now, um, I'm in a similar boat to you. I could go Max Gone, but I'm chasing the value there and going the cheaper option in Marshall. As you said, I like instant reward, and I'm chasing mm. that matchup with Tim English. Unfortunately, it's one of my favourite players, Steph Martin, getting the chop. But because I avoided those injuries, I'm in a luxury upgrade position there. So I'm taking that option. Rightio. Team Look, I've got to deal with Fife, don't I? Yeah. You do. I've got to deal with a guy with a scratch on his elbow. So yep. he comes out of my team, and I'm bringing in Lockie Whitfield, okay, into the midfield. Not because it rhymes, just because it's the yeah. right thing to do. Now, <laughs> Oscar Baker will get the chop, and Will Snelling, as I said before, will come in. Gives me a nice big warm chest, That's boys. That's huge. To fix up ready for next week. We could buy a heap of dead oil for uh, next five with that, <laughs> yeah, I You but, certainly uh, could. Calvin, you actually need to use that money to actually start making your side better. How many rookies are you still playing on your field this week? None, not, surely. I'm not answering the question. No. It well, is a loaded question you, because it's a horrendous you know the answer. answer to that. Yes. What you do need to do, though, Karen, Stop. make sure you've got your trades made before tonight's lockout, which is, of course, <laughs> for the Crows and the Bombers game, 7.50pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Get those set and get ready for a big round 18. Did you listen to that? Use your <laughs> trades. You I, are a trader. I will do it this week, I promise. <laughs> Let's hope so. All right. Good luck to all you guys out there and happy trading. No donuts, Scout. <laughs>